All right, YouTube, we're here for another Death Shadow video. Just changing things up a little bit more just to make sure, like, this right here is the normal list that I've been playing. It's got two Faithless Lootings in it. Just trying the same, basically, 75 without the Lootings in it just to make sure that I don't miss the Lootings. I've been caught up in Looting for a while. I just want to make sure that it's correct to play them. So I just want to bounce back and forth. It's definitely good to bounce back and forth between lists. You know, not just get completely stuck with what you're doing. Work and manipulate it. Play a little bit of everything. And make sure everything is good here with the sound. Yep, looks like we're all set. Founders All Day IPA, right here. If you're looking for a, looking for someone, I will be a part of your your proud organization. I think I'm probably within, like right now, I'm within, I don't know, six or seven cards of the list that I'll play in a couple weeks. Um, I'll probably next week start playing more standard, just because like I'm not, I don't really want to play too too much more of this because I've got it pretty set up. Oh, this hand's pretty good. It's kind of slow. We have a cantrip and a bobble here. It could be explosive. Need something like a like a thought seize to really turn it on. But if we find that thought seize, we're off to the races. So we could get this is another hand that on the draw we could get run over. But Scalding Tarn. Just playing against another Jeskai deck. Alright, so I'm gonna just bobble now. It doesn't give me any information about my opponent's gonna draw, but it lets me know exactly what we're playing against. Unless there's another Scalding Tarn, then... Okay, so we are playing against Blue White Red. So we will go like this. And we're just going to Thought Scour the end of my opponent's turn. And then Serum Vision's using the Wraith to set it up for next turn. Okay. Push isn't great. We know this Teferi's gone. Against blue white, not really. Uh, it's yeah, it, blue white's just the worst matchup in the format for you. Like, it is really awful. Like it, it just really is the last, the worst, the worst you can, the worst one you can imagine. All right, Stubbs a pretty good draw. Okay, so we're gonna be able to get. We could play Gurmag Angler this turn, but I, I made a mistake here. If I wanted to play Angler this turn, I should have Street Wraith before to hit a fetch land. This likely means I'm not gonna play an Angler this turn. Okay, so we're going to put I'm going to put this on the bottom and put this on top. And look to cycle them both next turn. Hopefully hit another land so that I can play something. I don't really want to play a death shadow just to, I guess I could have actually ran out of death shadow there to get it bolted, which would have been all right cuz like just deploying a threat. Okay, so there's land, which is good. All right, do lands. 
So let's get this blood crypt. Let's cast this death shadow. And then I'm going to cast the other death shadow as well. After my opponent does whatever they want to do to this thing. Jeez, okay. The next one we can play like Angler plus um Angler plus Shadow. What is this a Yeah, we're just gonna stub this. We're gonna get one of these path and then we could get like they could go path to exile, then when they could go land Jace, and they go Jace bounce my shadow. We get to replay them. <clears throat> I would agree. The VG land. We're pretty. We could get Jace bounce here, which would be kind of annoying. Okay. So our opponent's, you know, using a lot of their resources. I'd love a discard spell or something like that here just to kind of clear the way. Hey, Archmage, I saw your, I saw your whisper. All right. So I could just go, like, tap three, like, I don't have Faithless Lootings in this build, so I might as well go... I want to keep my graveyard intact. Not going to shock, though. They don't have a colonnade, so we can just go like this. And then we can still replay it, theoretically, if they remanded it. But these decks don't play remand anymore. I don't run out both of these, so if my opponent plays a Teferi that I can, you know, I can deal with it. We lose a couple points on our shadow, but we don't need a huge shadow here. We don't want to get burnt out. And we're gonna have this fatal push, so we're not gonna take any chip shot damage from like a, from like a uh, from whatever it is, a snapcaster or a colonnade or something like that. Yeah, I'm gonna look to play some more standard next week, Archmage. I think um, I think my teammate wants to play black red, so that's probably what we're gonna test because that's just what the cards they have. And it looks like from what standard I've seen, just play hollow found and pass. Here comes like the cryptic chain. We just like keep cryptic to just survive. Okay. Whoa, you're gonna let me attack here. And we're just gonna fire this off now, so I draw like a snapcaster or a stub. I watched Matt Folk stream for a little while today, and while his decks didn't look super great, Nicol Bolas did look very good. A discard spell to follow this up would be really good for the home team. But we do not have it. They're drawing Electrolyze. So they're going to need a red land in order to have this resolve and to kill us. All right, Seer Bridges isn't bad.
<clears throat> Field of Moon, okay. That could be a mountain, but I don't think it's gonna it's enough time to kill me. So we have electrolyze and two unknowns. They probably have like a cryptic command. I doubt they have a snapcaster, because they would have snap path more than likely. I could upkeep snap cryptic me, which looks like it's gonna happen here. That was two damage. Okay, they're just gonna finish this angler off. We'll take this. I think I would have gone. Well, no, I guess the shadow. If it like the shadow does go poorly, then you're pretty screwed. Okay, so we want both of these cards, and we probably want the Gurmag Angler first. So let's put this on top. Put this on top. Attack my opponent. Then we're going to Thought Scour them and play the Angler. It's just like a little trick that you can do. You can Thought Scour your opponent to draw the card that you want. Now I tap poorly. I guess we can just not hold up the lightning bolt. Like, well, we might as well. My opponent's really not going to be playing around very much at this point. So, this gives us the option of the snapcaster coming. We can, like, bolt, snap, bolt also. Or if they play a Teferi, we can bolt the Teferi. Just, like, little things that we are available to do. It's going to be kind of annoying if they feel to ruin me, but I'm not sure they're going to have the time for that. So now if we get to it, if we if we get to like land with both of these, the lightning bolt's lethal. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna we're gonna go for this in their upkeep. I think one two. I guess I go for it now because it's two spells. The more I play this matchup, the more I actually think Death Shadow's favorite against this deck. I think this deck is actually kind of garbage. Like, I don't know what... It, it's, like, too fancy and doesn't deal with the creatures well enough. Because, like, I just keep winning. Like, I, I wouldn't think that I was very good against this deck, but I just keep beating it, like, every single time. And I'm, that I'm probably going to jinx me here where I lose, but... Pretty easy board in there, which is nice. They adjusted the treasure chest, so they're up to 235 per open. So if we get a 5-0 or a sub tonight, we could get we we have 112 treasure chests. We could get wild. Like we we could get freaking wild tonight. I've only got two more beer. I only have one more beer after this, so I don't know. I don't know how wild that's going to make me, but but the treasure chests are up, like 0. .4 tickets in EV. So we could go nuts. <clears throat> We're going to keep this. Like... Your angler having multiple angler hands are still pretty good against this deck because they're gonna path you, which is gonna make things more easier to make it more easier to cast, and the game's gonna go longer. Are you kidding me? Playing ancestral visions. All right, the third angler is a little overkill. This is where it hurts a little bit to uh, to not have faithless living in this version. 
So I think we're in the market for both of these. We're gonna put both of these on top. And then we're likely gonna get a Death Shadow into play next turn. Especially if my opponent only has something like Path to Exile. Search for his Kanta. Yep. This card is how is how Shadow loses this matchup. This card is just so difficult to interact with. No, so I'm a part of the card hoarder network. So I do not um I don't like I, I use card hoarder to rent like card hoarder gives me cards to stream with. Okay. Um I kinda like all the cards in my graveyard, so we're just gonna play the shadow. And if I get bolted, then it gets bolted, but we're going to feel bad about it. It's kind of a greedy bin when you're looking to cast four mana spells. Oh yeah, I saw this. I saw that deck earlier today, Archmage. So I have to think about what I want to do here. Because, like, I think I'm just going to serve him with my shadow and then pass. My opponent can one for one with the shadow, or they can just like cryptic bounce the shadow, which is kind of annoying, but we're going to get in for some big chunks of damage. I don't really want to run another creature into like a, into this. It does kind of feel bad. I'd like, I'd like a bolt or a thought scour, just something here. Definitely going to save this until I can make a one, one. How close is this coming off? One more turn. It's probably going to kill me. They play, they played. Steam vents and shocked themselves. So this might prompt a response from my opponent here, just instead of taking a million damage. So what I could do, they've clicked in their deck. Okay, so they're much more creature, they're more, a little more creature centric. So I could just like play a Gurmag Angler for four. And then allow my opponent to wrath my shadow and my angler. And then have one, two, not a lot, be able to play another angler next turn. Now they just go like cryptic bounce it. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to delve four cards. Make it so they can't go like counter bounce. We are like effectively bluffing a stub here. So... OK. 
Okay. So just counterbalance. I mean, that's okay because we get to replay it. It's not too bad for them to do something like that because they're, they're going to go up a million cards here in a bit. A really great draw would be like a Stubborn Denial. <clears throat> and we'll take this. Like, this Path to Exile just makes everything easier for us to cast. The search is going to be annoying though. We just have to like pace our threats and hope that. Right. They still get to search, which is rough. This is going to be a tough one to win, especially without any lightning bolts. Like, probably 20% to win this one. Snapcaster's not bad. Problem is, we don't have a Thought Seize. You have a lot of mana, so we can do a lot of different things here. Finding a Thought Seize would be really good. Okay, we're gonna cycle it. We're in, we're in a we're in a tough way, so. So I could go. So I can force a Wrath from my opponent next turn, then land Gurmag Angler. That's probably the best that I'm going to do. So we're actually going to go play Snapcaster Mage, target Serum Visions. Flash this back. Okay. The bottom, put on the bottom, and then play. Play this. Hopefully, my opponent wraths, and then we can maybe draw like a stub. Hopefully, something like that. They drew a cryptic, which is tough. They're one land off of of Wrath of God plus Cryptic Command. Okay. Find stubborn now. We haven't hit a stub yet. On the bottom, put on top. And I think we're just going to play out our hand here for one last hoorah. Just leave the Snapcaster Mage in my graveyard in order if we had a Colorgon's command to bring, that's just the best thing to bring it back with. So we've got a thought sees them after combat, I think. I don't think we're going to beat a lightning bolt. We can't beat a lot of things right now. So we're kind of just going to go for it, I think.
Like, I've just got to kind of pray that, you know, something gets through here. In case I drew something to do with my mana afterwards that to make it a better play, because they're probably gonna wrath the board no matter what. X blue. I could have hit like a Lilian or a K Command or something like that. Okay. They don't actually have anything. I thought they had this opt. They used it. Okay, um, guess we're just gonna take this dispel. It's mana efficient. Like, a card like Liliana is not gonna matter at this point. And we're not beating that. Like, I, like knowing this line, that's what we took here. Settle, geez. And us being at two means we can't deal with that. And them having a negate. That settles a big draw. And now I need like running cryptic, running Kolygon's commands probably. Or just stubs. We do just get to attack with one creature. It will just send in there with Nasty. Yeah. I'm just saying it's going to be like a tough one to win, I think. Like, it's going to be difficult to pull off. Just because they have an active as Kanta, they have resources. So I should cast this after combat, after they settle me, so it doesn't mess up my scries. Okay. Yes. So like just K, K command would be our, our wicked draw for the home team here. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot about that. Let's hope they don't do that with... Okay, Snapcaster is really good. So I don't think we want either of these. Snapcaster is not that great. Probably just gonna cast Snapcaster Mage right now. I forgot that I delved my cake or that I don't have a cake command in there. I kept thinking I was gonna like Snapcaster back my my cake command, which is something that I would I would enjoy to do at some point here. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we, we got a plan. So they kept the card that they, they, they kept the card, right? No, they ditched a colonnade. Okay. So they have negate, flooded strand, and X. We're just going to send it in there. One, two, three. Deal with this. They path, we stub. K 
Okay, command returns Snapcaster Mage. I think I'm just going to send him here with a shadow. It makes them act. <clears throat> it does. Yep, and that's what they had. We're just going to do path. So, <clears throat> we know they have negate. So then before blockers here, I'm going to shock them and return my Snapcaster Mage. Because we know they have negate Fluttered Strand. So return target creature from your... Return target creature from your graveyard. Coligon's command deals two damage. <clears throat> well, I don't want to give them the opportunity to block. I want to do this before they block. Because if they go to negate here, like I don't want them just to block and then be able to like wait. Because if they negate this, then I'm just going to push. Like They might negate this thinking they can block, and then I'm just going to push this. So they're negating this here. So if I stub this, so now we let this go, and then I push this Snapcaster Mage, and I stub the path. And then we still have a Snapcaster left over. Yes. <clears throat> now what do you got, man? Come on. Yeah, buddy. That right there is magic. Let me tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. <clears throat> Let me just go get a fiddle because that guy was played. So why would they not path first? Do you mean, what would you have done there, Archmage? Are you talking about path with Colgon's command on the stack? <clears throat> so would you have gone like, they flash and snap, they path, then but pathing the shadow turns off denials. We then I think push me some I'm trying to think. Let me just scooch on over here. We played a million turns. Turn four. So we're down to four here. Okay. So right here, here's what you're talking about. Whoa, no attack, what happened there? 
Oh no, we do this next turn. Okay. So you would attack with just Snapcaster Mage here. Because then the K command's lethal, even though we know they have negate. I don't necessarily like that because I'm I'm making them like they don't have to do anything, theoretically. <clears throat> and like likely we can set something up with this command K command sets up. Uh, lethal turn anyways. So I think just attacking with this Death Shadow kind of, in some ways, puts the onus on our opponent to act. Like, they have to act. They can't just sit back there. They could just be like, okay, I take this, activate as Kanta. This means we initiate the fight without using a card, I feel. And I feel like initiating the fight without using a card was the right way, right thing to do here. And my K command was a must counter, basically. Like, it wasn't necessarily. But this K command, if this resolves, does provide a really insurmountable advantage here. So, what you'd have done here, Archmage. Oh, well. Alright, we're not going to look through the replay again. Went by too fast. I think in almost. Because, like, when you have. Because a lot of that was going to also come down to, like, mana usage, I think. Pending their draw step in as can't activation, right? Which is why I think, for a reason like that, it's important to start off with the Death Shadow. Because if you, if you initiate with Shadow, then you're, like, you're essentially, like, starting the fight with nothing. You know, you don't have to commit mana, you don't have to commit resources, you're saying like, you know, the fight's starting right now. Which isn't what against what Arkman said, I, I just disagree with the VG land. I think that it was I think it was correct to initiate with the Death Shadow, but not the Snapcaster Mage. I do understand why you did what you did though. I think I'm gonna ship this hand, like it's pretty weak to a combo deck. There's no threat. This hand's got a discard spell. Put this on the bottom. <clears throat> Chef at Dunes. We got an Archmage Delight here. Guy Molly watched me with this deck like two weeks ago. Was not even close. It was a one sided beating and he was swinging the hammer. We're going to take a Thalia. There's no Thalia. So now we're going to take the Leonin Arbiter. You think that card is like the real deal there? So here comes the wall. So I'd like to hit a land drop. One time dealer. But draw a card. Hey, Thraven and Spectre got like four cards banned in standard. Okay? Not four. It got Smuggler's Copter banned. It got ref and it got Reflector Mage banned. So I think. This game's going to be a little tough to win, mostly because this Flicker Wisp is going... Well, I guess we can dismember this, so hang on. Let's get our land here. Brave Inspector's good. So I'm just going to dismember this now, so they don't get too much of a battlefield presence. And it lets me play Death Shadow. We're going to hope my opponent didn't drop past. 
Buying on Bishop, yep. Don't do it. Don't path my snap my dude, don't do it. So we're kind of on battle rage and prey here. This is how we're gonna win this game. That's kind of the out that this deck has. There's a there's a huge set of modern there's a huge set of decks in modern that just cannot be King of Battle Rage. I'm gonna go grab some water, I'll be right back. Oh, they path it? No, they just flicker whisper it? Oh, great. All right, we can do that. Twenty. So I just attack. They basically guarantee block with this wall of omens. Then I block this with Snapcaster Mage. Or I can like flash in Dismember. Block this, Dismember this. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> but I, I don't see a world where they don't block with Wall of Omens here. So it's not like we're going to be able to kill them. Then we're probably just going to go like hit this, dismember this. I would assume that they might chef at dunes on their main phase, which would be really good for, excuse me, for the home team. This is such an annoying card. I'm probably going to fetch another red source. Yep, I forgot. They, I, I never play around Resto. I guess I can't really get another red source. So maybe I just flash in Snapcaster Mage, target Dismember, and do nothing. Because I don't want to like go fetch shock, and then I can't Dismember. So yeah, we're just going to... And then allow ourselves to fetch a basic if we need to. And I'm just going to chump block this golem and target dismember. Because I don't want them to ghost quarter my red source. If they ghost quarter my red source, then I want to be able to fetch another red source with this polluted delta. So we're just going to target dismember. And then we're just going to block. And likely just like not do anything. Because he either lets us untap. If he lets us untap, we just battle rage this. If he doesn't, then we fetch a blood crypt tapped. There's not really much play here for us. Let me just make sure. I don't even really want. Yeah, there's not really a lot of play here. We're just going to kind of turn this Death Shadow sideways and cast Team of Battle Rage and hope my opponent doesn't have a Path to Exile. Or another Flicker Wisp. If you have a Flicker Wisp, you have a Flicker Wisp. Blade Splicer. So we actually can beat that if my opponent doesn't put 
both tokens, both this and the token on it. Because we fetched to make this 11. No, we actually still killed him. Nice. You got a path. And I do think it was correct for my opponent to go as Corby. They have a path. Maybe? Or they have a resto? The resto doesn't do anything, though. No, they're going to blink their Flicker Wisp. Flicker Wisp comes down and then gets my shadow. Yeah, so they got me. Yeah, they wrestle the Flicker Wisp. Yep. Good plays, good plays, good plays. Good plays all around. They got me. That's fair. That's good fair and square magic. Uh, so I like all this stuff. I tend not to like my counter spells. I like to shave a Gurmag Angler because they're bringing in... I don't really like this Pyromancer because we can't really fight them on the ground, actually. The Braid's probably fine. There's a lot of cards. I could just go just like this. Could shave one more angler for like an EE, which gives me an answer to like an onboard, uh, whatever it is. Um, rest in peace. I don't hate that. I can just go one more of these for this. Yeah, let's go. Because they're going to have rest in pieces. We want to make sure that our, we want our lava mans to be working over time. My opponent appears to know what's going on here. All right. So here's like the question, the million dollar question of the day. Do I fetch steam vents or do I fetch black lands? Because my hand is so black that I'm going to be an adult and get a steam vents. But he does kind of pigeonhole us to one spell a turn, but if we're activating our Grim Lava Mancer, then we're okay with it. All right, we can deal with this. All right, second one, not good. <clears throat> Lost creature, destroy that creature and loyal. Huh. Alright, we're just gonna deal with this blade splicer. And then I'm just gonna shoot this, probably just shoot this Draven Inspector or shoot um something that comes down on two. Chef it news. I'm just going to take this. And I just want to trade. I just want to trade and get to a spot where like, my Snapcaster Mages can <clears throat> really do well. Second one, not as good as the first. But we can just trade it off also. Hopefully trade it off. Maybe hit like a three power creature. Good news is the opponent doesn't have a lot going on. Planes. Thalia. Well, that's kind of annoying.
So we're actually, I think I'm just going to attack with one of these. Shoot this, thought sees my opponent. But we either get a free damage in here, or we get to, like, actually do our turn. And this, this Lava Mancer is useless. Yep. Good play by our opponent. Get this resto out of here. Good play from the opponent there. We get our free damage in. They get their free damage in. We all get our free damage together. Okay. Yeah, it's quite the uh, quite the guy there. That is not a playable code. Once again, we'll get in here with our damage. This K command reads shock something, return target death shadow to your hand. They're probably going to path it, so that's not actually ever going to happen. Oh, I tapped poorly. I should have fetched. This is a mistake. I should have fetched. Here comes a resto. Okay. We still can then get their last card, fetch shock, shoot this, and attack with our death shadow. No, no, that's stupid. That's stupid. Is it? I give them eight. I go to five. My opponent attacks me. Eleven. Yeah, they can't attack me back. I'm kind of tempted to send it in with this Lava Mancer too. To make it so I can get another Lava Mance activation next turn. Which sounds kind of crazy, but... Barring weird equipment. Yeah. So I think I kind of want to send it in... Because if I get another Lava Mancer activation, what does that do for me? It could clear a blocker. So... I think I'm in the business for clearing a blocker. Because if I draw a cantrip, it makes so that, that happens. So we are going to send it in with this Lava Mancer. I doubt they'll block. They didn't block earlier. I don't think they'll block now. Because my shadow is lethal on its own next turn anyways. This also makes it so they can't fire off their tech edge. Because their tech edge gives me a second card in the graveyard. It's been a pretty tight match. My opponent appears to have a head on their shoulders, which I appreciate.
Yep, that's a good play from the opponent, I think. Because <clears throat> this cuts off a blocker. <clears throat> Dude, Loyal Sentry is the brick wall, Arc Mage. Oh. 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 That is right up my alley. So now I need thought thought scour into another cantrip. Thought scour into an inquisition of Kozilek. <clears throat> Yeah, that was just a savage rip. They put four cards in my graveyard. Yeah. That was a good one. <clears throat> that was a good one from the opponent. I think they played very well, too. Like... Like their their top deck was like insane right there, but I think that they played very well, and like de and deserved that. Just kind of a just kind of a kick in the teeth. Not even close. Loyal Century for twenty twenty. You heard it here, folks. I endorse. I endorse Loyal Century. Yeah, we're gonna mulligan this. <clears throat> yep, we're gonna go down again. Keep this. Yep, put it on top. It's a turn two angler. Any position. It just takes dismember. I guess I can look for a discard spell here. It could be. In which we can't win. Which we will be 1-2 in this league. Which will be sad. You especially can't beat Pox on Mulligan like Oblivion. Mountains. We're playing Mardu Pyromancer. <clears throat> a deck that I would rather play than Pox. Hopefully we find a removal spell here. That'd be decent. We don't need any more of those. For the rest of the game. No more lands would be great. What a brutal matchup to mulligan in. It's not bad. Yeah, we're just going to take this Metamorphose. Please. <laughs> We got a comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we got a comedian in the chat. Archmage will be here until I am done streaming. Whenever that is. Probably around midnight. Joke's on you, dude. 
One mana, two damage, make a 1-1. One, one. Loser. Death Shadow. Fighting Bolt, not bad. What am I robust to you? You're just the you're just the greatest mod that Twitch has ever seen. That's what you are. That's all you are to me, Archmage. You're just a mod. And don't ever let it get to your head. It's all you are to me as a mod. Okay, so we are gonna have to deal with a Bedlam Reveler pretty soon. Because they do have three. The Rave Rider probably ditch a Fatal Push to get five. Fatal Push Lightning Bolt. Okay, so land. Land incoming. If they have no land, we could win this game. For sure. Wow. God, I am so good at this game. Sometimes I surprise myself. We're just going to like... Probably snap thought sees this reveler. We might snap thought sees a terminate or something like that. Like we might just be able to overpower this, um, this uh, bedlam reveler with this gourmet angler. Yeah, snap thought sees for sure. Okay, we are Yeah, you got it, dude. Yeah, we're just going to take this Bedlam Reveler. You can spin your wheels with that Faithless Looting until the cows come home, sir. I have to ditch a land. Jeez. The hits just keep on coming. They haven't even hit a lingering soul yet, which is like really good for the home team. Yes. We might be able to we're probably gonna be able to overpower our lingering souls, to be honest. Upstairs. Pow. Pow, pow. Yeah, sometimes Gurmag Angler just takes you to the promised land. So I want this, this, and this against this deck. Um, I don't want... I want to cut an Angler. I want to cut like three Street Wraiths. And I want to cut my spot removal. I'm going to leave in one more street race and cut a denial. Just keep in two denials in order to keep the game flowing. You know, kind of tempo out of Lingering Souls maybe. Just plug the holes long enough. Um, I really want to keep this hand because, like, we have blue mana. We can cast a blue cantrip if we draw one. We have, like, the tools to play a long game, and we have a free redraw. So, like, I'm gonna, and we have a stubborn denial, right? I'm going to keep this. It totally could go haywire, 
but I'm also keeping this because we're playing against a discard deck. And I just like like mulligan against a discard deck is so bad. That's nice. That's a blue can trip. So they're drawing a thought seize. I will stub this thought seize, I think. I will not stub this thought seize. I will fire off a thought scour though, if they thought seize me. Because I want to have a shot at another land here. Okay, there's my fish. So he might like take anything but the Gurmag Angler and then pop his spell bomb. We hit a Pyromancer, which is, you know, doesn't feel great. Not good for the home team. I hope the chat's having a fun night. I appreciate y'all for hanging out tonight. If you like what you see, hit the follow button. I am getting close. Need like 60 more followers to get to that magical 1,000 mark. I gotta figure out something cool to do. Took my discard spell. And he's gonna, he's definitely gonna fire off this bomb now. Yeah. Maybe I'll save all my chests and open them up when I hit a thousand followers. Maybe that's what we'll do. We're drawing two cards here. All right, we are playing Magic, ladies and gentlemen. So let's lead off with this Thought Seize, figure out if we have to leave up Stubborn Denial or not. So we're going to take this Pyromancer, and we're going to stub this Colgon's Command. Because we can't deal with this Pyromancer. Alternatively, I could take the Colagon's Command and then look for a third land to hit their Pyromancer with my Colagon's Command. I think I like that better. Because they can just dictate the pace of the game. And this lets me at least keep moving forward. We do need to get to this Angler. Like, that is our number one goal. We want this land right here. So we're going to put this on the bottom, and we're going to put this on top. Yeah, they know we have Stub. Yeah, I, I came to it. Took me a hot second there, Archmage, but, you know, I'm a sharp cookie. So they played Blackleaf Quest. So they drew that. So now we're just going to go bang, bang. He might push his own. Um, I'm going to get a basic. Probably basic swamp. He might push his own pyromancer in order to like get something going. But we'll take that. He probably ditches his land, which means he just has fatal push, which makes his faith of students pretty worry pretty horrible. Okay, so we got double push. Which is not going to do anything against my Gurmag Angler with Stubborn Denial. Okay, so I no longer have a Gurmag Angler, which is sad. But I can go like Snap Thought Seize and then trade trade off. Um like basically trade my opponent's hand for the snap for the the, the uh, Snapcaster, and we have kind of a dead thought seize. So maybe we won't do that. We're just going to thought seize. We're, no, we're going to go snap seize. Jeez. Because so now they can just return Gurmag Angler and make them discard a card. That K command was bad. It was a great top deck. And then we play the Angler next turn. And we basically have Stubborn Denial up for the rest of the game. If 
they probably take stub or snapcast. They take snapcast mage. It doesn't really matter what they take. They've been they've been effectively like round into the dirt. I'm not even gonna cast my my uh, thought sees because I don't want to take this with it because it doesn't do anything. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I guess now I just thought sees this cast Gurmag Angler. And now like I don't even think Blood Moon saves them. Get rid of these commands because they're gonna be too slow. Get rid of this thought sees. And then we can get rid of one of these serum visions because we have another one. Yeah, we're just like tightening the noose. I don't I don't see my opponent having a good way to get out of this. Yeah, they drew land. So we're definitely attacking, and then we're probably thought scouring into Death Shadow. Excuse me. Yep, and the hits just keep on coming. My opponent's dead to quite a few draws next turn. They can't even get white mana now. Because yeah, now that now their lingering souls just get stubbed. So they they don't have any outs. I guess they have Bedlam Reveler. Yeah, Bedlam Reveler costs one, two, three, four, five, six. Bedlam Reveler just costs two. So Reveler's an out. They would need Reveler into but then they just chump block, so it doesn't matter. And a double fatal push. They double fatal push, they can get me. But all that starts with a reveler. Yeah. Now this is. They should. Yeah. This, that's the right way to tap. So they need double fatal push, basically. Yep. The bedlam reveler is how they did it. What a rip. And now I have to think because they can actually like kill my Death Shadow with just casting a spell. Yep. Might as well just let him do it. Yep. There's a now there's a lot of draws. Like if they if they have a push, I'm in trouble. That's a good draw. That's a good hit. So I'm going to go for it. They would have pushed before I had a chance to draw a card because of either another Stubborn Denial or a Snapcaster Mage. So now I just pass priority. Okay. There's no sense going over the top there. <coughs> Lingering Souls is a good out for them. Which they haven't seen a souls yet, so they should be able they should be casting one soon here. Yep. It's difficult because their lingering souls aren't getting them any traction though. They just have to chump. Like they're they just get in the best. They, they could go pyromancer into lingering souls next turn, which would gain them quite a bit of traction. Here comes the discard spell. Yeah. See now here's their traction. So now we're getting in trouble. So now we need like Battle Rage, EE, -E, Liliana the Last Hope. Another Snapcaster Mage. Like we're this game's slowly falling out of control for us. Two, 
Jeez. We do have going for us. They have to chump block both of our creatures every single turn. But like them just playing magic keeps them in the game. This is going to be a very unfortunate one to lose if that's what goes down here. That's what it does. They hit the first reveler. Then they've got it going on. They ditch Manamorphose and Blood Moon. So their last two cards are great because Manamorphose is free. Yep. So now we're looking like we need Engineered Explosives. Liliana Lasto probably still does it here. Because we just go like up on here, attack, they chump with two. Then, so yeah, Last Hope's really good. Block, block. So I think we just block, play defense now. Block here, block here, take four. Yeah, we're just playing defense. Now we're drawing to like Battle Rage and EE basically. Yeah, we don't have Faithless Looting in this list. I cut him for this league. So we have, we've got like four outs. Turn off auto yields. Four outs with some redraws. We're already at three, so I'm, I'm going to fetch. Like, if he's got a bolt, he's got us anyways. Okay. So now that probably means we only have... I guess we still have four outs, because they have to chump away both of these creatures. Yeah, I think we're just going to thin the deck out here. As little as it actually matters. And it could be wrong because it leaves us dead to K command. Yeah, that's just like that's just about two turns too late. Oh man, that's a tough way to lose that one. Yeah, you're right there, Ben Dozer. Rendozer, how are you doing tonight? That was unfortunate. They hit the Bedlam Reveler on the turn that they had to. They had to hit Bedlam Reveler into something. And we're just going to run it back the same. All right, I will play first. Yeah, this hand's really good. This hand's super good. If we hit a third land, then we're in such good shape here. Because we can go like Pyromancer, Pyromancer on three. Thanks, Rafi. He's going to mulls a five. We won game one on mull five. How are you doing tonight, Rafi? My opponent put a card on top. There is no better feeling than, mul than discard spelling your opponent than mulligans. They have a 
Faithless Looting, they're kind of off for the races. We go three to five. Right? When is my deck request going to happen? I don't have a deck request from you, Rathi. <clears throat> okay, so we're just going to jam this Pyromancer. Then cast two spells next turn. Or cast at least one spell. I might go like Thought Seize Death Shadow. Well, if I didn't hit a third land, the Liliana could kill a young Pyromancer, which I don't really want it to. What is this shit? Oh my god. God, you hurt me. I can give this a whirl. Because I love you, Rafi. <clears throat> okay, we're not going to be like full greed here. Put on the bottom. Put on top. Bugglers? What's Bugglers? Buglers? I probably should play my Death Shadow. Worst comes the worst, they kill it, and I can call Yon's command it back. <clears throat> Who knows? I might draw a one mana spell too after I draw my land. So I can do like, just clear, keep my turn clear. Militia. <clears throat> That's the Im you're talking about the Imgur thing you were talking about there, right? Archmage. They're drawing land, okay. So they play their land. <coughs> Opponent puts said land into play. I'm not sure I can handle Kiki Jiki. Like Nibblus Unstructionist is definitely pushing it. Blood Moon. All right. I guess this is this is what's going on. My greed. So we know they have Mountain Bedlam Reveler left. Glad I played my Shadow last turn. Like at least it, at least it does something. Well, we can draw basic swamp. That would be sweet. Okay, so blood trips what they drew. They still have the mountain. That's nice. Because I can like dismember a token at the end of their turn. Make my shadow massive. Make two more tokens. All right. Yes, dismember is great. One of the cool things about dismember, you can cast it under a blood moon. Hopefully, we get a quick one here. There's been two really long leagues, three really long games so far. <clears throat> Just a bunch of grindy stuff. We're three matches in. We're an hour and 25 minutes into the league. You have a purdy mouth. All right. I'm going to save this Street Wraith for next turn. This hand's pretty good. I don't play very fast, which is also part of the reason why I take forever to stream leagues. Okay, we're ready for a good old fashioned throwdown here. We just take this last hope. 
This is rough because they have Hissing Quagmire. This is Black Green Rock. Hissing Quagmire is so freaking annoying. Gourmet Angler would be gas. If I could get a Gurmag Angler, I'd be pumped. All right, that's pretty close. So I'm going to go get Blood Crypt. Cycle this, because if I hit Gurmag Angler, I think I want to play it. They do have a Tarmogoyf, but... Okay. Let's play it. Scavengers. Now I kind of want to take this Fatal Push. Because there's two threats. The Tarmogoy is bigger than my Death Shadow, though, so I think I'm just going to take this Tarmogoy. Next turn, we are going to get digging for hopefully something like a, a Snapcaster Mage would be great if we drew that off the top. Um, a couple good draws here. Drew Grimflare, that's going to put some pressure on us because they have this Fatal Push. Okay, that's nice. Start here. Okay. I think we're going to run out this Death Shadow. And stub this Fatal Push. We are at 8, yes. But, that's Death Shadow for you. You got to play, you got to play on the, on the edge. I recently cut off my music. I used to have background music to play, but I stopped doing that. If there's anybody in the chat that does watch, is that like, all right, we are all right with that. Scab Genius, okay. I'm going to play Tapland. I'm going to play Blue Marsh, okay. I'm Let's cast this. I'd like to find a removal spell. Because I know my opponent's hand. Can't cast that. So I think I'm attacking with this. I could hold back, though. Because they're not going to push my angler. Yeah. They don't have a lot of removal spells that actually kill Gurmag Angler. You know, my opponent wants to double block and trade, and that's cool. I'm actually going to delve all my creatures here. So there's, there's my creature. So now I'll just start. My opponent doesn't have any instants or sorceries. Let me look in here. We probably can get rid of my sorceries. I don't have very many sorceries. We can get rid of Serum Visions. We just go on like a little Tarmogoy Shrink now. I don't really think that snapping them back is going to do anything. We have Thought Scours and such. Yeah, so let's try. Proactively making Tarmogoyce tiny. <coughs> My opponent is being very patient with this fatal push. Yeah, exile all the creature guys. Music is distracting. Because Death Shadow is like much more high upside. Like if I draw, because I had four lands there, if I drew Snapcaster, I could like snap Battle Rage, 
I don't know exactly what they were at, but I think the upside is very good. Jesus. What a troll. So they have Hissing Quagmire and Fatal Push left. All right, we have another stub. So I don't think I want either of these. If I attack with my Death Shadow and the play a fetch land attack with this, then it makes it eight. My opponent throws all the creatures in front they trade. Now we don't do anything. We probably just block this and then go to one and then stub this thing. So yeah, we're gonna attack with Shadow. If my opponent blocks with everything, then we're going to think about it again. We're just going to fetch shock, trade three for one, and then have double stub up. This hissing quagmire is going to be super annoying now. Main deck to run the last troll is interesting. We're not going to fetch now. Okay, so there's the Quagmire. I'll probably block the Grim Flare. Another Scavenging Ooze. Okay. If I attack with all, doesn't he just chump with his Grim Flare, eat two creatures, and kill me? On the crack back, I am McLevin. They block with no, they block with Scoos or Grim Flare. We're dead. So now we're kind of stopped in our tracks. So we block two, and then we take, so we block four, we block that, and we take six, seven. Yep, now we're kind of stuck. Okay, so he just, he, we, he had these two, and he was at 13. Okay, bro? We have an 8-8 Shadow and a 5-5 five, five Gurmag Angler if we attack. He blocks here, then takes this, and he eats this, and he eats the the uh, Grim Flare Bro, and we're dead. So attacking with both creatures killed us. <clears throat> oh shoot. No big deal. Just there's a method to the madness. We need them to draw some non-creature spells. Yeah, we need them to play into the stubborn denial. What sucks is the longer this game, they can just sit here and hide behind all this. If we find a battle rage, we're in good shape. If my opponent attacks and doesn't kill me, we're in good shape. Oh. What is this? Block, block. Yeah, I mean, we're not blocking.
That's unfortunate. Block, block the big one, take six. Yep, they got us. That was unfortunate. Set up there. This black green deck is tough. It's tough to handle. All these gen decks are just hard because like I like the Mardu Pyromancer deck, they hit harder than they than this uh, than they do. They hit harder against us, which is difficult. They're obvious. I mean, I guess I could make them do it, or I was just saving life for EV. Life EV. They have a million two drops. This is good. I don't want any of my counter spells. I don't want my battle rage. And we want to cut as many street wraiths as we can. And we just got to settle in here. Look for a long game. This dude. <clears throat> this guy is, um, this guy is ready. Like, he's got main deck. Who plays main deck to run the last troll? Like, that is an ass kicking. All right. All right, we're going to keep it. This is not the hand we mulligan. They mull a f mold to six. That's nice. We're going to bobble on their upkeep because, like, we're just taking a two for one no matter what. Where can I find a decent side? I have an article going up for top deck this week. So you should be able to find it on Top Deck Productions this week. What do they do there? They put a card on top. It's one, one, two, three, four. I kind of want to take this tireless tracker. But I, don't, I can't deal with this Tarm Life. Now, because if I take this thought season, it's going to get my Gourmet Angler taken from me. They guaranteed kept the land on top. Yes. Yeah, land for them. Hissing Quagmire is like such a beating. Just like an absolute beating. I just can't beat it. Alright, that's not bad. So let's go get a Blood Crypt. If we hit a Bobble or a Street Waste, we can play Angler. We hit a Dismember. So we're going to put this on the bottom, put this on top. So Tarmogoyf. Is one two three four. Well, it's one two three. So Tarmogoyf is only a three, so we can dismember it. We'll make it a four five, and then we get to play double threat, and then we get to dismember their next card, and then hope that's enough. <clears throat> Hopefully, I don't draw a discard spell. There's Goyf right here, right here. We are taking a hell of a lot of damage here. And I think, oh no, we actually clicked out of the Tyler's tracker. And I think that's the way that we win. Like we've just got to end this game as quickly as possible.
because my opponent is just so much more equipped to play a longer, more powerful game than I am. Unless we get Snapcaster K command loops. Okay. So they get my dismember. So they have Tireless Tracker X. They draw Bob. Okay. Bob's Bob's kind of scary. So let's I'm gonna check out my top card here. It's another Death Shadow. So nine fourteen. I don't think I'm fetching regardless. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, I shouldn't have played my land. That was stupid. Should not have played my land if I wasn't going to fetch that card away. And the question is, do I want another Death Shadow or do I need another piece of interaction? I kind of want to draw like a removal spell. And if that's the case, I should have fetched before combat. Because they're just going to play Kalidus. So I actually think I'm going to fetch this away on their upkeep. So this turns on Revolt for me. I'll just get a second red source tapped. Jesus. So the last two cards are Kalidus and Tireless Tracker. So it's probably worth just hitting both two spells right now. Or I can hit a blocker. Bang, bang. They lose a land, yeah. I guess we let Bob reveal. They reveal lands, son of a bitch. Okay. So now we don't do anything. So we know their hand is their draw step plus Kalidus. So I think I just attack with both my creatures. If they don't block both of them, then we just K command and kill them. Target player discards a card, two damage. Whew. That's very greedy from them, I think. Very greedy. It's really interesting what to do with that K command right there. I almost want more removal because my opponent has... I don't know what I would bring in, really. I could just... I could cut like another Street Wraith and then bring in a Braid because they have Bob. I just want more ways to deal with Bob on the draw. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen ways to deal with Bob. Thirteen ways to deal with Bob. I don't know what to cut for Bob though. Probably well, probably this a braid then. Because Lava Man also kills Bob.
Maybe the Pyromancer's small ball. I kind of want my anglers because they're hard for them to kill. I don't see where another room for an El Lava Man is. What I'm worried about with discard is I just want, like, I want a million answers to Bob on the draw. Yes, but, like, I need, like, if Bob lives on the draw, then I'm going to lose. I've got one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 ways to deal with it. And they're going to have discard likely as well. But I guess if you, by that ideology, if you trade Inquisition for Lava Man, it's still the same count. So we're okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, no, I mean, Bob's the best card against me. Like, Bob is how you lose, I think. It's Bob and Liliana. Okay. We don't have a way to be Bob, but we can't mulligan this hand. Thoughtseize would be pretty, pretty bad here. I'm likely going to Serum Visions on one. Yeah, to look for an answer to Bob. <clears throat> I don't think we want either of these. Yeah, we don't want either of these cards. So next time we're probably going to play Dermag Angler and hope that doesn't get us... Give us there's Bob. Jeez. One time. There's our bolt. So one, two. So I'm actually gonna thought seize them because I don't want to delve over my lightning bolt. And I'm going to be able to snap bolt this Bob, which will make up for the two for one at least. And now I can at least get Liliana off the board. It's Bob drawing your card. It's going to be rough, though. These are all so bad. Probably just the last hope, as the last hope is slower. But, like, if I take the last hope, it's just a slower tireless tracker, so I might as well just take the last hope. Maybe they won't play the tracker on three. Hopefully, I can find a way to answer it. So, I drew Decay. And there's a ghost quarter. Yeah, so they're not even going to play that thing now, which is nice. They can go tracker for a bunch of next turn. No, they're going to play tracker now. Okay. And that's good to do because, like, all right, Snapcaster is going to help. So we're going to fetch a basic. This game's going to go on for a while. So we might as well settle in here and we're going to snap bolt this um, this dark confidant and then um, probably snap dismember this tireless tracker and then play Gurmag Angler next turn so there's the fetch land we knew about I'm probably going to chump this tracker. 
because I just don't want, like, with me having to have to snap Dismember next turn, I really don't want to take, like, 4 million damage. <clears throat> yep. The big old time of life. All right. We're going to have plenty of food for those. For those uh, abrupt decays, swap. Play this. We're gonna dismember, and then I've got to try to shrink this time of life. Wait, which one did I target with that? This one right here. Yeah. Oh shoot. I hate casting dismember on Moto. So they have creature, so let's try to see if we can get rid of our This does kind of suck that it makes our future snapcasters bad, but like I think we've got to get this Tarmogoyf. And then because they can just abrupt decay to make it larger. So, I don't have to, right? Because it, it just turns into a 4-5. Right, Rafi? He's got like a Liliana here, which looks like he does. Yep, yep, he got us. Yep. And that's, I mean, like I said, like that's, like I don't think I can mulligan my hand, but my opponent just got too far ahead of me. And they got me. Which was tough. Tough for the home team. I play the. Too legit to quit. I'm gonna keep this hand. It could turn into a whole lot of nothing though, because it's all air. That's not a good sign for a hand like this. Okay. Yeah, this could go south pretty quick. We get an island, dig to something important here. All right, well, Death Shadow is not bad. So hopefully we don't get mooned. If we don't get mooned, we got a chance. But if we do get mooned, then it is just good night, Irene. Just Stone Rain, nice. This deck does play Lightning Bolt. But if I can get Death Shadow into play, I'm in such a good spot. And if I can untap with it, it plays Chandra too. I guess we're not going to do that because it plays Chandra as well. That's kind of the tiebreaker. Though we're likely not playing around Blood Moon anymore. Excuse me. Yeah, this is going to get Blood Crypt and smoke this thing. Hit this. Next turn, play a shock land. 
and then just hope that we don't get. I mean, we, this Death Shadow is going to take us take us to the Promised Town, the Promised Land. Excuse me. I might Thought Scour in order to um, maybe hit a Gurmag Angler that lives through more things. So, yeah, let's at least give ourselves that shot. Because we lose to so much next turn, like land, Inferno, Titan, that sucks. All right, we're going to play it. And cross your fingers. You know, land, Titan. They can just play Chandra. Blood Red Elf, Lightning Bolt. Blood Red Elf in the Lightning Bolt, I mean. But if we do get to untap, I think we're going to win. Because it's only going to take us two attacks to kill them. Yeah. That's likely game over. This is another Death Shadow on top of my deck. It was not. So let's go fetch probably my Swamp and Snap Bolt this. Swamp. And it sucks next turn we have to fetch shock in order to like snapcast or serum visions, but it's probably what we've got to just find a find a way to win this game at this point. And cracking the clue is good for the home team. Unless they just slam a Blood Braid Elf here. And then it's no longer good for the home team. Another Blood Moon. That'll probably do it as well. We gotta, we're not gonna, we can't go home with it. Yep, take this Inferno Titan. The Snapcaster is going to take us all the way. We got double team of Battle Rage. We've got three spells left in the deck we can cast. Acid Moss, okay. Four attacks. No, what? Okay, six attacks, excuse me. And I'm going to just battle rage now. I'm going to get in while the getting's good. As soon as they kill this Snapcaster Rage, we're, we're going to call it a night. But you never know, they might draw a bunch of lands. I guess I should wait in case they draw like an Arbor Elf. Because Arbor Elf is the brick wall. Okay. Might as well see if we're going to play any more of this game. Nope, they have a Tyler's Tracker coming. We're good. We're going to scoop it up. We got Ponzud. Sad. All right, so against Ponza, I want my last stub and an EE. And we're going to cut a Gurmag Angler and two Snapcaster Rages. Keep the rest of it like it is. We want to be able to interact on turn one. And then EE can also hit, you know, Blood Moon in the late game, so that's important. Yes, losing, like, losing to a deck that is just designed to... Stop you from playing, like, blood, losing the Blood Moon is frustrating. Yeah, we're going to keep this. It's a good hand. I appreciate everybody in the chat hanging out tonight. 
This will be my last match of the night. I'm pretty tired. I don't think we're going to call it after this. Um, you guys should hit uh, hit the follow button on your way out. I will appreciate all of that. I likely will be back on Wednesday. I'm going to play something fun on Wednesday. Not, no shadow on Wednesday. We're definitely in the market for this Thoughtseize. I might be back tomorrow. I don't think so, though. I think I will side in. If I see Trinisphere, I will side it in. But they only play, like, what? Two Trinispheres, maybe? And a Braid is just kind of a pretty poor uh, on-rate removal spell compared to what I'm already doing. But it might be better than, like, a Snapcaster Mage, you know? I certainly could buy that. Okay, so let's take a look. I could just bolt this in Seer Visions, which I kind of like doing. Making sure I can get Gurmag Angler next turn. There's no sense in casting this Thought Seize right now because I have to kill this. And I would like to at least make sure I can get nasty next turn. Which, at this channel, we like to get nasty. We like to get nasty as soon as possible. So, four... Four cards coming in. This will be card number five. Thought sees them six. Serum Visions. So I actually don't need this Mistress Bobble because it's four cards, three mana. But it's just free. Like, I'm going to go Thoughtseize, Serum Visions next turn regardless. So I might as well just put this on top and put this on top. I think, I'm, I think we're in the, we're definitely in the market for a team of Battle Rage. Okay. One, two. Okay, another Utopia Sprawl. But I have a lot of mana next turn. So let's see what's coming for them. Molten Rain, okay. Okay, so we're going to get our cantrip in while we can. We don't want either of these. Uh, we might want, no, they're just one. Yes, we don't want either of these. Keep the serum visions for our one snapcaster. And it's nice that they're likely going to hit my blue land, and my blue land probably isn't going to what's yeah my blue land's not is not what's going to win me this game. What's going to win me this game is the red lands. Hit this. I think we're just going to keep this clear. We're just going to keep going in there. It's a little worse against like a Planeswalker. But I think we are in the market for smacking, clearing the way for nasty. Okay, there's Blood Ray Elf. This could punish us a little bit. Utopia Sprawl. 
All right, so I'm actually going to fetch my basic here and dismember the Blood Red Elf paying two. They milled over a Glorybringer. So their last card's Wooded Foothills. Let's get an island. Whoa, okay, so that's E for one. We blow up the, all those. That's, that's sweet. So let's swing in here for one. Blow up all these Utopia Sprawls. Then my opponent's probably pretty cut off from a lot of their good draws. Like they're cut off from Inferno Titan, which is important. Yeah, this is... <coughs> it's kind of a twofer, because one of them is from Bloodbraid Elf. Okay. Last opponent's last card's Wooded Foothills. Okay, sweet, 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 sweet. This is so satisfying to watch. Well, hopefully it turns out decent. Um. We didn't see any graveyard hate in that game, so I'm going to side in another Gurmag Angler. Cut a Snapcaster Mage is going to be kind of slow on the draw. I think we just want to get, get a creature down as soon as possible. We want to interact on turn one, and then we want to have either stubborn, we want to be able to stub a Blood Moon or kill a mana creature. God, I love Founders all day IPA. I think I'm going to keep this hand. I got a double discard spell, a bobble for a redraw, slash scry. Yeah, a couple ways to hit um, Blood Moon. Another land's not good. So let's check out what our top card is here. Thought seize. We don't want a thought seize. So let's go fetch a swamp. I would understand if somebody told me that this was a mulligan. Okay, so we're just gonna take this moon. It's gonna be a slog here, but hopefully we hit some gas off the top. That's gas. That lets us kill tireless tracker, which is good. Mountain Stone Rain. So I kind of just want to Thought Seize the Tracker. Don't let them draw cards. Because they're effectively out of gas. I kind of am too, but it might be like... Not taking the Tyler Tracker might be the only way for me to, um, yeah, I gotta take this Inferno Titan. They're gonna get a clue, but at least it makes it so the cards in my hand trade. If I if I had a clock, then I could get away with, um, not playing the, uh, to taking the tracker, but I don't have anything going on. They shocked themselves. Here comes a bird. No, you help as well. Okay, so they have five mana next turn. So we need a threat quick. There's a threat. So now I'm just gonna go get Blood Crypt. Push this. Play Death Shadow. And now we're just racing. We gotta hope my opponent misses this turn. Doesn't find a way to kill this thing. Uh, 
Oh man, their tap. Did they get hit Chandra? No, that, that tap is good. It's bird, great. Okay. We should be in good shape now. Let's see what they're drawing. We should be good here. I think we're turning the corner. As long as this isn't something to Chandra. Okay, we can beat that. I kind of want to put this on top to keep the lightning bolt in my pocket. Because I, I want to kill this. Because one, two, two, it's six mana, I guess. Like, I kind of want to kill this, but I also want to uh, bolt myself when my opponent goes to, um, to kill this uh, Death Shadow more than likely. So three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this now. It might make my opponent go down on this death shadow. My fatal push likely isn't doing very much more anyways. But the push is just kind of a dead card. This is why we kept the bolt. We're drawing Stone Rain, which doesn't really matter. Serum Visions into Stubborn Denial, which is gas. Puts on the bottom, put on the bottom. Psycho. Yeah, I think we're just going at our opponent. Well, I guess, how do I lose? I tag them for eight. They play, they hit exactly Inferno Titan. They go to six. So they're not actually dead. So I guess I'm going to get the Chandra off the board. Yeah, unless I get Titan... But, like, that means they get Titan next turn. So I basically give them one Chandra activation. And we still have outs to, like, we could draw Battle Rage. So... Or Snapcaster. We know we boarded it out. A lightning bolt is also lethal. So they draw molten rain. Molten rain. So I have to. It doesn't matter. That does it. Yep. All right, so let's open up our pity chest here. Open up the old 3-2 chest. 3-2 chest always feels bad. But let's open up one of these. Let's see what we got. Nothing really that.